Hi, I'm Giovanni from Allen Big, the creative drinks agency that specializes in design, development and marketing of quality drinks, education and beverage experiences. Allen Big and ICCA Dubai together brings to you Cocktail Zero, the art of alcohol-free design drinks. Our certificate programs in dry mixology and bartending shongshi are designed not only for inspiring bar professionals working in the industry, but also for the serious enthusiasts interested in learning the art of a mixology. Come, introduce yourself to the fascinating and soul-stirring world of alcohol-free designer drinks. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all the viewers who are joining us today live from across the world. It is a pleasure to introduce you to ICCA Live world-class culinary online, an online platform dedicated to webinars, live open days, and industry discussions. Today we have an exciting session on dry mixology and bartending. This session is hosted by uh, Ms. Shanaz, who is the uh, course director at ICCA and presented by master mixologist Giovanni De Pagola. Over to Ms. Shanaz and Mr. G. Thank you, Karun. Hello, everyone. I'm Shanaz Raja, the course director here at the ICCA Dubai. I design and develop courses and oversee their quality assurance processes. This afternoon, I will be your host with master mixologist, Mr. Giovanni De Pagola, Mr. G for short, presenting to you a session on the topic, the tools of the trade in dry mixology and bartending. Before we go forward, I would like to give you a short introduction on Mr. G. He has 20 years of experience in the beverage industry in Europe, Middle East and Asia. He has hosted and handled the biggest bars and some of the most happening events across Europe. He has several new openings to his credit in UK, across Europe and Middle East and Asia and has trained 1500 bartenders for various hotel groups and bars across the Gulf region. He is also the co-founder of Alembic, a creative drinks agency which specializes in concept and bar menu development, new openings, staff training and education. We encourage you to ask questions as this is about learning and we too will post a few polls to to test your understanding. So do watch carefully, type in your questions into your chat and I will take them up with Mr. G as we go. Over to you, Mr. G. Wow, fantastic, excellent. Thank you, Karun, thank you, Shanaz. That was a great introduction. Uh, really, really, I feel so emotional, eh? Grazie. So, well, I mean, enough said in terms of myself, so that's, uh, that's really, today is all about Cocktail Zero. And, uh, and through the video we play at the beginning, you really understand that Cocktail Zero is, is a wonderful platform. It's a, it's a course that we run here in ICCA, and uh, we're really using our knowledge uh, to transmit it to you, the art of alcohol-free design drinks. So what really does mean is that through the courses, we have different layers, we see different angles. So we really go into the history of the soft drinks. Then we move into the understanding of the technique, the method, the tips and tricks, also the tools of the trade. And actually this will be the session we're going to concentrate today. So we really cover everything. And then we are wrapping every day with the cocktail section where you demonstrate, you can apply whatever we learn through the day, you will apply and put in practice. So example of today, we're gonna wrap the entire session in a, with demonstrating two wonderful recipes that you will be able to replicate at home or in your bar, you know, depend where are you watching from. So what we do here today, as mentioned, is all about tools of the trade. So what does it mean? 
Those are the tools that we need to actually make a good cocktail. A good cocktail needs to be balanced, it needs to look good, it needs to be fresh, it needs to really serve the purpose. So through the course, we also have designed that every single cocktail zero belongs to a category. What does it mean? Likewise, we do in a normal environmental, uh, when we are in a normal bar where we're serving alcohol, in general, people go for an aperitif or maybe they have a meal where they're really matching their, uh, uh, their favorite beverage. So then they move into teas and coffee. Then we move into more lifestyle ideas. So we call them the outdoor cocktails. So what we do there, we do the uh, uh, garden and then we do the, uh, actually the pool. So those are the two really outdoor area. And then we have one category, which is pretty much our trendy categories. And now as we stand, it's all about tiki. So then we'll see. So all our students, when they come here, they really, uh, really get empowered, understanding and study all the beautiful journey that goes along. So this is about cocktail zero. So today, as mentioned, the session is about tools of the trade. And we will take, I will say, around half an hour, leave it or take it, trust the Italians, we know about the timing. So what we do here is about the, uh, the, the wonderful tools that we need to actually implement and make the cocktails uh, uh, as, as they can. So to make a good cocktail, first of all, needs to be balanced. How do we do that? So we're using a jigger. Now, it's a very simple jigger. They come in different colors. They come, uh, probably I must have something here. You go. I have here a nice selection. We have some gold style. Eh? So we have something like this, or maybe classic, just a stainless steel. So uh, the most important really is how we really utilize them. And it's so simple. We're just gonna grab a glass or whatever we like to pour. And imagine we have a juice, and as simple as it is, we call them single measurement. So you go with the small side. The small sides can be uh, 25 or 30 milliliter. Oh, they can be different size, but these are the generic. Or you can have a double, eh? a beautiful double shots, which is around. We call them 20 to 50 to 60 milliliter. So this is pretty much in general what we have. Eh? This is a nice juice. I will have that later for me to carry on. Then what else we have? So this is about the jigger that we're using. Then another interesting tools that we're utilizing when we're talking about measurement is also a, an interesting spoon. A spoon has a different tools. It has a different usage. So we can do as while we're steering something. You will see this on action very soon. Also as a measurement. You will see that when we're going to make our next recipe. Then the beauty of, of, of all those tools that they all have not one single use, but you can actually have them apply in a different way uh, the, uh, as long as the recipe you design or we design really apply all of them in one go. So in a multiple way. So another great tools I always like to show you, meanwhile with the bar spoon is actually a, a mixing glass. This is something that we, in, in general, those can be glass or can be like this glass or can be crystal so quite high hand if your bar is fancy enough for your beautiful bar at home will have one of those or they can be metal so metal also sometimes again how does it really works very simple so i will have the i will add some ice because normally when we use this one is we would like to have a dilution so a dilution, we're gonna melt the ice while we stir it, and then we're gonna apply that dilution. So it's gonna get cold, and it's gonna add a bit of dilution. So imagine that uh, my juice is quite warm, so I will pour this inside. So the mixing glass, you remember about this the bar spoon. So what we do is a very simple. So here is where we stir. Now this technique we will see in an hour session because we actually gonna have a different series through our cocktail zero is probably the next one will be about method and technique so we're going to go through a bit more details how to understand here i'm connecting to another fantastic tools which is the we call this a julep trainer these recall the guys when they come here they study about the history of cocktails so they will know when the name of julep trainer coming from because that belonged to one of the american cocktail that was created so what we do here simple as it is we're using a, this is a, a quite handy professional way. And then we go through like that, straight into the glass. So what he did, he really made it this a nice juice that was 
Room temperature, nice and cold. I will try. Hmm. Great temperature. So this is a good way, really, how to showcase um, the usage of a julep strainer and a mixing glass. Then another ingredient, we, it's all about, sorry, another tool that we need to really to implement and to make sure that now we make it cold. What about if we're going to make really cold and you really you want to open up? So in this case, we're using a shaker. So this is a classic uh, two piece. Then the, there are different styles. We can have them like this three pieces shaker. So what does it mean? A three piece shaker like this is that we have a base eh, where we always put uh, ice and, um, and the rest of the ingredients. Then we close it and then we put a cap. Now this is very handy to use it and you can have like this. So really, really good. Another, another shaker we can actually use is another super cold. This is much more for another design cocktail we do where we need really uh, a lot of oxygen inside. So this is called the Parisien. So really makes that cocktail be very frothy. The cocktail shaker we use today is actually a two-piece shaker and is very, very handy. So what we're going to do, I will use this ice I have already inside here and then I will use, you remember the juice we used at the beginning? Perfect. And what's going to happen, the way we're going to shake this, so important. So really it's going to break the ice, it's going to open whatever the liquid, the juice, the syrups, whatever we decide, the coffee, any kind of liquid, tea. One thing we should never put inside the shaker is carbonation. So that means tonic water, lemonade, or any, any, any kind of cola you don't put in the shaker. Well, if you want to try, then just ensure that you are alone in the room because the result will be a bit of an explosion. So in this case, what we do, this is how we shake it. And the good shake is when you clearly see through the camera here, it became frosty. So very exciting. This is how we open. Fantastic. This is uh, the result. It will come nice, beautiful, really foaming on top. That's what we want. And again, here we're showcasing another tools, which is uh, auto strainer. This allow us to keep inside all the pieces. So if we're using fresh fruits, will stay, so small pieces will stay inside, so that's the, the actually, the rim will help, and also small pieces of ice will, will, go, will not go inside. If really our ice is very small, in this case we're using Oshizaki ice all the time, so very hard ice, so very difficult to break, you can use another strainer which is called the fine strainer. So, I will do like this. So in this case, this will capture all the small particles that goes inside. So it's in a very, very easy way how to really utilize it. You can see the, how it changed when we use the mixing glass and when we use pretty much the, the shaking. So the color change, it looks much more colder and the foaming on top, really, really always appealing. And the shaking technique is something that people love it to see. Now, in terms of our shaker that are ready to go, and this is our strainers, I will put it here. I will get in this. And now is the time to discuss how do we really using some of the small tools then we, you know, particular that we can use also for decorations, also for crushing the fruits. So let me start with the, how do we really, we cutting the fruits. Now cutting the fruits normally happen either on a chopping board, now, chopping board can be, if you are at home and you are the only one using and you pretty much, you are confident you can use a wooden board like this. This is my personal, every time with me, we always sanitizing and pretty much is easy. However, in a commercial use, I always recommend to use a classic like this, it's a plastic. They come in different colors, normally for the fruits. Uh, we happy to use the white and then it's easy to wash and keep sanitizer all the time. So that is a more on commercial. If multiple people using here at school, for instance, we all use this kind of this kind of chopping board. Now, two of the knives I would like to showcase to you. Those are two different knives. One is a serrated like this, and one is a flat blade. 
Well, like a good chef, the good chef they do it, uh, they have different knives, you know, they're very famous because they have different knives, small, big, different size. Well, the bartender is exactly the same. Uh, we have chef the bar. Eh? So in details, we really need multiple knives, at least two or three in terms of size. You know, if you have to open maybe a big watermelon or pineapple, you need a longer, longer serrated knife. In this case, we keep very tiny here. So the serrated knife will be perfect to do something like a citrus, for instance, something like this. And you will see it really goes down in a very simple manner. So why we are using the serrated for the citrus? because the skin will has a quite a very oily and sometimes and the seeds inside are very dangerous. So a knife like this will go down, will get stuck to the seeds. So this is where we are using our serrated knife. This one is quite more on the garnish side. So you can really utilize these when you want to do some nice peel. So let me show what do I mean by that is pretty much like this so you will go around mm, all the way and then you can make a peel like that so nice and beauty and we can squeeze we'll see the usage of this later in this case i will say we'll use the peeler and i will demonstrate when we make the cocktail in a minute so after this the knife selection we have one more which is a good fun uh, this is called, probably in English, we say double side sword, if that makes sense. Uh, I think it makes sense in Italian. Uh, so it, it means that it's very useful. Uh, however, if you abuse, it can work against you. So let me show you what do I mean by that. So I get a glass, and there is a lot of cocktail where we crush the fruits. Now, when you're crushing a very soft fruits, it's okay. So your raspberries, your strawberries, your watermelon, those ones are pretty much... Uh, easy to crush and this is where your madler come through now here is where you probably let me cut this well i'm going lime here already cut it so let me show you here so what we do imagine i will i will crush some lime and i will cut like this in six pieces so i did a half in a small uh, in the small cubes like that so pretty much as you can see and i'm gonna put straight into the glass so what do I mean to be careful is the oil around the skin. The skin of every citrus has a two layer. One is very aromatic, but the one that are much more inside, quite bitter. So what I'm doing here, this is really helpful to really to release some of the wonderful aromas that are inside. And as much we love the technology and the light, there is something that we can still not transmit it, is the perfume of the smell, the beautiful aromas that are coming through. What I can smell here is just a fresh lime, citrus. So this is what is it. And it's simple as it is. And this is, can be already a cocktail. Imagine, I'm just gonna put some ice. And if you really like citrus, what we do, I, I can utilize one more of these. This is in a classic bottle open. And what you do, you, you utilize this to open all your carbonated uh, uh, soft drinks. And you see, this is what we do. It's super simple. This is how we really making already a cocktail. You remember the bar spoon as a measure, as a stirrer? Exactly what we do here. Well, this is, will be another usage. We call this technique the swizzle. You will see next time when we meet to get this. So this is already a nice cocktail. Oh, this is when I say I love my job, you know? Excellent. So in this case, we pretty much we showcase. I left this one, which is called the squeezer, because I will actually going to make a cocktail now, and we can see how to utilize this one. However, before we do this, I think, Shanas, do we have a, a, a poll to, to our uh, guests here on, on, um, on ICC? Yeah, I think we, we have to ask something, shall we? Yes, we do. Here we go. Now, let's see. Let's see if everyone is you know, listening, taking notes. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, so we have the poll on. And uh, the question is, this tool helps bartenders create the perfect pour every time. 
So the options are the bar spoon, the jigger, or the cocktail shaker. Uh, okay, I like that. Everybody seems to have got it right, Giovanni. No, no, it's changing now. It's changing now. The, the <laughs> answers are coming in. The answers are coming in. The answers are coming. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. Yeah. I don't want to give out the answer because they're yet coming in. Okay. We wait, we wait. We wait for another. Yes, they're coming in. Okay, so the majority says it's the jigger. Okay. The majority Excellent. says is the jigger. And then we have a few people who say it's the cocktail shaker and a few and maybe one or two people who say it's the bar spoon. So what is it? Excellent. So that was the first tools that we had in our hands today. That was the jigger, the one that gave us all the time the perfect measure. So well done to the people that get right. And uh, in fairness, the bar spoon is also something we're using for measurement. However, since it's too small, we tend to use a much more larger. Uh, it gives us the perfect measure every single time. The cocktail shaker, you will see, is not for measuring, but really to chilling the cocktails. So, okay, shall we, Chana, shall we do another cocktail now today? Shall we like, carry on with the, with the demo? Yes, we should. I think we should. Fantastic. I, I, I should have everything I need. So, what about you remember that we well, today, this is a tropical island. Uh, now, this recipe you see here, we have all together all the all the ingredients there. We have the vegetable nectar, we have the pineapple juice, we have the fresh lime, and then we have the Indian spices. So this is the chocolate. It's a filter that we have here. So let me get all the ingredients here. Oh, I love it. This this is one of my favorite parts. Okay? Now, um, I don't know if you mentioned, you, you, uh, Shanaz, I don't know if you mentioned at the beginning that uh, by the end of the session, we will be giving you a kit so you can actually download the recipe. And if you watch all the series we're going to do, you will have a beautiful at home to, or in your fantastic bar to actually replicate all those recipes. Okay? So I think it's a it's a good gift from us. So let me start with it. Now, we, uh, as we say, we see on the, on our um, uh, recipe, it actually has a special fruit nectar. Uh, so special fruit nectar can be uh, really it, it can come in a different way. So it can come in a, really as a fresh, uh, or it can come in a frozen, or it can come direct like the, as a really as a nectar. So pretty much this is all the time. Now today, I would like to show you, since I found some really great fresh passion fruit, I will use only fresh passion fruit design. So let me put all the ingredients here so that you guys can pretty much see very clear. And I will remove this. And so first of all, we got the glass. So this is, will be the glass where we're going to make our cocktail. And I can actually move this here so you guys can have a very clear idea. We don't need this, uh, just to see. So everyone at home will have a beautiful, nice view. We'll have this, excellent. So what do we have? The passion fruit. Now, passion fruit, like a citrus, because if the skin is a very hard, I would prefer to use like this. And there we go. Now, those passion fruit, why I bought them today, is because as you can see, they were, you know, when they are look very nice, the passion fruit, they're quite sour. So those ones are quite soft and they're quite ugly. So an ugly passion fruit is brilliant to make a cocktail and to eat because it is mature, has been ripe. So it really has a bit of a sweetness inside. So perfect to make a cocktail. Now, the, the actually the tools we're gonna need for this one is a, is a shaker. So this is our shaker. Um, now we're going to use, and what I will do, I will actually, pretty much, I will put this passion fruit inside. And you can see the color, I'm sure you, you will be able to capture from the camera. It's really nice, and the aroma of the passion fruit, 
It's quite unique. It's all tropical. That's what we call these the tropical islands. So now uh, that will represent. Now, if you feel the passion fruit, they can be different sizes. If you get smaller or bigger, on the recipe we make it clearer for you. It's around 50 milliliter. That's what pretty much the mention. Another thing: fresh pineapple juice, freshly squeezed from us. And we say 120 milliliter. You see two measures here, so 120 means twice this one because this is a 60 milliliter. And normally juices are easier when you put them in a squeezy bottle like this because you can do a few trips here clearly, and then 120 milliliter are done. Now to add a bit of a spiciness, those are drop, those are bitter, those are non-alcoholic bitter. They're really, really great for mixology, so on really on high end. And then when you smell this, you will love it, the five spices. So really cool. You get the cardamom, you get the cinnamon. So I'm putting, you can hatch three to five drops. That's all depend on your flavor. But this is pretty much what we like to balance. So the bitters, always you can add. But when you add more, you cannot remove it. So don't forget when you play around. And I'm sure I have everything. Shana, I have everything in, in, my, in my recipe. I missed the lime, I think. Yes, I missed the lime juice here. And then I will show you what do we do. Before we model our, uh, our lime, in this case, what we're going to have, we will use the squeezer. Eh? And this is what we call the elbow squeezer. So as it is, this goes really perfect for lemon, perfect for lime because it's smaller. There are some for lime. Uh, so for the lemon, which is larger, or even for grapefruit, which is even bigger. So what we do here, you can see, is really, it goes all the way down. Now, my pineapple, I, which I, I tasted, is quite nice and, and, and sweet. And the actual lime, it really goes so well with the pineapple. So any anytime you use a pineapple, feel free to use the lime, which goes super well. So in this case, I put my lime, I put my Indian spices, I put my pineapple, I put my passion fruit. It's time to shake it. What we did is we shake it with ice all the time. Unless you will see next time we're showcasing about dry shake. So that's a good technique for you to know. We're not going to talk about today, next time. So we want you to come back. So what's happening here is, is this. We're closing very tight. We never shake in front of a camera or a friend or guest. I'm shaking in front, really, beside the bar. Good shake, vigorously, and this is what we want. Oh, fantastic. So now you remember what we used before. We put the ice, and then here we're using all the tools that we explained. I will use this one for sure because the passion fruit has a nice pulp inside. But then I will use also a strainer because the seeds of the passion fruit. So some people will make a nice clean cocktails like this. And this is what we want. And you can see of the freshness of the pineapple. Really nice, gentle, you can tie. If when you are into the technique, we will show you next time how to, to do it in a different way, using a bar spoon. So this is pretty much gone, ready. And this is our tropical island. Now, there is no cocktail that, cocktail is like, is, uh, we always feel very personalized. So when we go out, we all like to feel, to dress up, and look good. So now, you know, our suits is on, our dress is on, uh, beautiful ladies, and the garnish is the makeup. Eh? So it touches, not too much, not too little. Uh, Sometimes they look beautiful as they are, in this case, we're going to add tiki style. So this is a tropical island. Should be have a bit of a green because I'm imagining I have my lovely palm tree next to me. Now, I cannot put a palm tree inside. So what we do, another tool very important is a fruit tongue. So here I have my bouquet of uh, fresh meat. And I will put, pick my 
nice mint here. Now, I will have to make it up to the garnish like that. Then I will leave this here because mint always goes as a last. I tell you why. Another garnish we're gonna add here is a passion fruit garnish. So look how beautiful. Now, why I don't wanna, I don't wanna put this inside first is because it's very simple. This is what much more heavier. So it will really unbalance the mint. So easy as it is, what I will do, I will just pretty much help myself like that. And then we do the mint. Fresh mint, we smell a little slap because we'll release a lot of the aromas. We'll go around the glass and then I will position next to that. Now, this is a tropical island and I tell you, sometimes it could snow in the tropical and in the tropic, global, global warming, warming is changing. So what we do, we can have some fantastic, great icing sugar on top and really doesn't going to have any extra flavor much, but it's gonna look, it's gonna give a nice white touch on top of the mint, really. So this is also the chefs are using the dessert, this touch. So this is a tropical island as it is nice and easy to make it. And I will let me adjust this so you guys can, if you do some screenshot, you can actually have a good, nice uh, angle to get it. Now, uh, and, and another great cocktails that we want to do, let me remove these that we don't need anymore. And I'll bring in another, another great shaker. Um, as you can see, shakers could be different uh, colors and different things. Another great cocktail is called cream soda, Kinoto. So we're using the coffee, we're using an, a, a G5 syrup, which is the Irish cream, fantastic, really goes very well with the, uh, with the coffee. And then we're using a unique product from Italy, which is called Kinoto, uh, which actually come from fruits. So really interesting for a great alternative for people, uh, they, they, as an alternative for a cola, for instance, if you don't want to. Now this cocktail is made in an in eyeball glass like this. Let me quick give a nice, always tidy at the bar. Don't forget, we always clean as you go, eh? you bartenders and people. So what we do here is, is that we have the cream soda quinoa. What does it mean? I will have my cream soda is here. So this is the quinoa. Now, do you remember what we say at the beginning? We will never shake the cocktail uh, or we shake the liquid, which is carbonated. This is carbonated. So what I'm gonna do, I will just keep this on the standby ready. It's nice and cold, I can feel it. And what I'll do, I'm gonna add the nice cream soda. Now, the recipe here, we will put, I think it's around five to 10 milliliter, that's depend on the level of sweetness you want to add. So this is where we're using the spoon as measurement. One spoon is equal of uh, uh, five milliliter, more or less. Sometimes could be 7.5, but that will be difficult to measure, no? So, and this is, so five milliliter fly, so 10 milliliter, five milliliter plus five makes 10, so 10 milliliter of the cream soda inside. Then what I will do, I will add my coffee. Hmm? Nice coffee. Uh, if you have to make this, make it this a couple hours before, keep it there. Don't make too much, otherwise the coffee, if it stays too long in the fridge, it will, uh, it will just be uh, pretty much go bitter. So this is a wonderful, nice 100% Arabica. So uh, this is what we're using. And then pretty much I'm going to do a 60 milliliter of this nice coffee I will have in here. And I will put it here. Now I'm not gonna have this one later. I will have this later on. So what I'm gonna give, a beautiful, nice shake because of what exactly it is. This is, we want to create a bit of a creaminess. Oh, now we can't see much through the shaker. So what I will do, 
look at this. Don't tell me that this is not really nice and sexy. So beautiful, creamy side. Now our glass is ready. And this is what we want. In the, in the specific of this uh, uh, recipe, you will see that when the quinota goes really explode in this nice, good looking cocktail, and this will be around half bottle so it's around 100 milliliter that goes inside simple as it is we're going to really put inside the glass or oh, look the cream that's why it's called cream soda quinoto eh? lovely look at this when you serve this to people they will love it, you know, at the bar, they will just wait, eh? They will wait till all this will settle and will keep really refilling. So it's really, really interesting. You can serve this with your straw. Uh, uh, we always using uh, biter straw, or we're using pepper straw. Now, always we say we garnish our cocktail. So do you remember what we did at the beginning when we use our, um, our very flat knife really to do the zest? I will have these. So in this case, we do a peeler. So meanwhile, we do this a peeler, we cut like that, and we go all the way till the end. And what's gonna happen, really? We have the oil of the zest that goes around. Now, coffee and orange is a great combination. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at this, beautiful. And this is gonna go all the way, nice. And this is the a nice, good looking cream soda, eh? Quinoto, look at this. And this is will go, will stay, will go, will go, till the top. You know, people love it. And when you're gonna have it, your lovely mustache will be there. So that's a nice cream. So Shanaz, do we have another poll? I think we have a few questions as well. What, what should we do? So I set you up a bit and I asked our audience to get give us some nice questions for you. The first okay. one, okay, get ready for this one. It's not difficult, but it's really nice. It's from Yasa in Kuwait, from Kuwait. Uh, Yasa says, Yasa says, coffee is big in Kuwait, and I'm impressed by what you just showed us. What other combinations can we make using different types of coffee beverages? Wow, okay, that's a, that's a really nice question. Eh? Um, well, first of all, of course, coffee is um, is really is a category on its own, and uh, we have so many different style of coffee. You can have it. You can have, of course, the entire hot beverage range from your espresso, a cappuccino, and uh, the, all all really the different angles. But in in a cold beverage is where really the beauty happens. So really mixing. And shaking as a simplicity makes uh, really people appealing. So just shaking a coffee and adding a bit of a flavor. Also fresh fruits, passion fruit works very well also with the coffee and the, the, the whey. So really, uh, then you can have the, the, the cold drink and add the great coffee style. So we're really using the, the, the we have the cold drink. Then what else we have? Uh, well, we have the, the French press. You know, that's also something that we like to use because we can uh, aromatize. So I'm sure, I'm sure in, uh, in Kuwait you can have fun really making a lot. And here in ICCA we have a great barista course, by the way. So I'm sure the guys they can will take you through. In our mixologies, we play really with these flavors. And uh, also in different blends of the coffee. This one was 100% Arabica, and I'm sure you can play with different blends of uh, where they're coming from, you know, Ethiopia or Kenya or South America, depending on how they're roasted. So coffee is a very wonderful word. Thank you for the question. I really like it. Thank you. So we also have Ashok Chatterjee with the same with a similar question. He wants to know: uh, Should it be a espresso or americano? Which one is better to use? Excellent. Good. Now, this uh, if you ask me as an Italian, uh, we we'll always use an espresso. You know. Uh, because we have certain drinks that we really go for espresso because it's much short concentrate. However, sometimes 
the, the espresso could be uh, too too much for some people. So I will say, you know your guests, what they like to. Uh, otherwise, the Americano at the end is an espresso where you add hot water afterwards. And I will say, in majority of the cocktail, people uh, will prefer to use an Americano uh, because it's much more versatile and it pleases more, more people. But it all depends on the customer profile. Uh, so if I come to your bar, please make me an espresso. <laughs> Uh, Sunny from Italy wants to know, Giovanni, uh, these mocktails are day drinks or aperitifs or after the meal? Oh, that's good. Well, from Italy, fantastic. Ciao. So, uh, yes, we, in our, as mentioned at the beginning, in our course, we're showcasing different uh, style of cocktails. We do aperitif categories uh, like food friendly and the tiki. So this one, for instance, the tropical island, falls under the tiki category also could be a great outdoor cocktail because the way it looks like uh, this one 100 goes under the category of the teas and coffee however again is how we use them uh, this time probably is the perfect time to have a nice coffee drink but why not in the afternoon if you have a good four or five o'clock with a few friends outside the terrace and you want a cold beverage this is a great cold coffee to use it so uh, so uh, the category we do with our students is really to start understanding the usage of a certain flavors uh, and then we make them pretty much based on our flavor profile and how we look like. Yeah? Grazie. Giovanni, we just have another two questions. We have Hasni, uh, we have Malone who wants to know, can we use other ca carbonated drinks as an alternative to Kinoto? Aha, I like this. One second, I'm going to do some water. Now, um, these particular drinks we designed with Kinoto because Kinoto is very unique. So it has this uh, very kind of like a bitter taste. Uh, so it's like a bitter cola. Uh, now, you can use a cola, cola, or you can use also uh, a wonderful tonic. So tonic and coffee goes very well. Uh, actually, there is a few brands or one or two they make. They already made a coffee tonic, so you can actually try coffee and tonic as a carbonated. You will love it because that is the bitter that really works with the coffee. So I like this question. Bravo. Naveen wants to know. Naveen from Dubai wants to know how much ice do we use when we make a cocktail? How do we know how much ice to use? Oh, this is a good question from our friends in Dubai. Thank you. Well, let me tell you, we will have a full session dedicated to ice. So, David, you cannot miss this. What are we going to have? Ice, just to let you know, this is an ingredient. So, this is an ingredient. So, really, ice will bring dilution. Dilution means water inside our cocktail. When we say fill the glass with ice, you fill the glass with ice till the top. What does it mean? More ice, less dilution. So filling up the ice, uh, your glass with ice is very important. Filling the shaker, three quarter is very important. It will help us to make the drink very cold and it diluted just right. So ice is crucial and always you drink with a lot of ice. Sometimes there's a misperception, especially when you use carbonation. So carbonated drinks, always with a lot of ice because if you put less, the ice will melt and the carbonation will go. Then we have Guru Das. He would like you to show him some garnishes with fruit and some tips on how to use fruit skins. Oh, that's good. This is another interesting. So today's session, we all concentrate on how to really the tools. We will have a session where we're going to decorate the dedicate to garnishes and uh, and how to really uh, place around so stay with us because if you follow us on our pages on uh, instagram on the website with icca we're gonna post and you will know when we're gonna do the entire session dedicated how to really skin the, the the fruits how to use some herbs how to use some other very simple tools that we apply when we 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 did just today you know very simple garnishes so you have to stay with us the last question from the day is from Noof from Abu Dhabi. She says, I'm so excited 
that you're talking about alcohol-free halal drinks. How can I do a course on this? Ah, okay. Well, our friends in Abu Dhabi are not far from here, so this is great. You can, uh, uh, we have a full uh, full session here in ICCA, and you can uh, you can just uh, follow us on uh, on the website on Instagram. You can find all the information about the courses that we run, uh, and and you can come and enjoy. You know, uh, this is uh, we designed those alcohol free because with the same passion we have in the alcohol beverage, we put pretty much into the alcohol free and I'm glad I'm glad of these questions because those, those are all brilliant questions and show that people are very interested and it took us many years of course to come and to put all this together because a lot of years of studying we keep studying of course we keep updating so uh, for our friends in Abu Dhabi and from uh, all over where people are watching you can uh, join us on the courses you can go to the website you can see all the all the details are there and those are courses that we do for professionals so for people that would like to have and enter the bartender career or for enthusiasts the bartender career or for enthusiasts you know people that they like to entertain friends at home so that's uh, so all informations are there thank you very nice questions so Shanez, i think th those are all the questions yes so thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much, everyone, for being with us on the show. And uh, do we have Abhi now with us? Uh, I mean, do we have Karun with us? Yes, there you are. Yes, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Mukherjee and uh, Shanaz. Oh, such a great session, a lot to learn, and at the same time, recipes to savor. Please uh, click on the file section here um, on your phone or on your tablets or your laptops to download today's recipes showcased by Mr. G. We are pleased to announce that we have an overwhelming response of over 250 participants in today's session. And something to note, today's session, the replay session, will be made available to you shortly. Thank you again for joining us. And we look forward for another exciting session on ICCA Live. Stay updated on both ICCA and Olympic social media platforms. Goodbye from us. Good Fantastic. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Thank you.